Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you so much for coming. I'd like to thank uh, not only the members of the staffs of uh, members of Congress who are here, but also those who have traveled near and far to be here this morning on this extraordinarily important event. And I understand the important critical nature of the humanitarian crisis affecting the people who have survived the attack in Ashraf and who are the responsibility of the world and the responsibility particularly of the United States government. I want to start out by saying that we are gathered here too many times. For those of us who have started this long journey with you, who are compassionately committed to the cause that you believe in, a free and independent and democratic Iran, the one thing that is important to understand there's a difference between the aspirations of what we want in Iran and the humanitarian crisis that cries out for resolution for those innocent people who are refugees in Camp Liberty and who deserve to be free. There's no doubt that the fact that they are still, still in effect imprisoned, imprisoned in Iraq should be unacceptable unacceptable to those of us who have had the privilege of working in Congress and in the U.S. government. From the moment that the attack took place at Camp Ashraf on September 1st, there has been, for all intents and purposes, within the confines of the United States State Department, a determination not to impute any responsibility or obligation on the government of Iraq. Despite every ounce of evidence to the contrary, that attack was a dastardly crime against humanity that was committed by, the, by and on behalf of the government of Iraq against the innocent people who were there merely to protect the possessions of the people at Camp Liberty under the very eyes of the United Nations. In any other circumstance, there would be such an outcry by the United States government against that attack that we would have demanded that people be held responsible, that there would be an absolute obligation for an investigation. But officials in the State Department say, oh no, Oh no, it wasn't the government of Iraq that was responsible for that dastardly attack. Oh no, it was not the government of Iraq that was taking orders from the mullahs in Iran that orchestrated that attack. And yet, the evidence has slowly but securely piled up one ounce of evidence after the another has now turned into an irrefutable conclusion that the government of Iraq was indeed responsible for the attack and, more importantly, the taking of seven hostages that the State Department, in the guise of a Deputy Assistant Secretary, Mr. McGurk, claims are no longer in Iraq. Somehow or other, our State Department has got it into its unfortunate belief that the United States has far more to gain to engage in a cover-up of the facts involving the attack at Camp, Liber uh, Camp Ashraf, and they denying repeatedly that the seven hostages that were taken are no longer in Iraq. Mr. McGurk has appeared before several uh, committees of Congress to repeatedly attempt to refute any evidence to the contrary in an effort to protect and avoid placing the responsibility on the government of Iraq. And yet, just yesterday, 
no less an independent, and I underline, a respected independent organization that is highly respected around the world, Amnesty International, issued a urgent report that essentially confirmed what we have been saying from the day that the attack occurred and those hostages were taken hostage, and that is, and that is, that the hostages are still in Iraq. So I asked Mr. McGurk a question. Mr. McGurk, I as a former United States ambassador would want to at least protect the integrity and reputation of the United States government and not engage in further subterfuge in order to protect a government that is not necessarily aligned with the United States interest in trying to resolve this humanitarian conflict. Wouldn't you, Mr. McGurk, want to at least now recognize? Wouldn't you want to accept the fact that no less an independent and respected organization as Amnesty International is denying your constant accusations that those hostages are no longer in Iraq and indeed is prepared to confirm that they have independent evidence, independent evidence that those, that those hostages are in Iraq? I call on you, Mr. McGurk, to come up to Congress and to apologize, to apologize to the American people for continuing to peddle the fiction that they are no longer there. I also, I also want to say the following about their safety and security of those in Camp Liberty. When Secretary Clinton, my good friend, indicated that she wanted the people to leave Camp Ashraf and move to Camp Liberty. She committed the United States government to assure their protection. She committed the United States government, if people would peacefully leave Ashraf and move to Liberty, that the United States government would, be, would do everything possible, everything possible to protect their safety and security until they were relocated. Unfortunately, the bureaucrats in the State Department are not adhering to Mrs. Clinton's pledge to the people in this room and to the people, to the American people, and most importantly, to the people at Camp Liberty. The facts, ladies and gentlemen, here are very clear. Do not get caught up in the legacy of retribution and anger that exists within the United States government over the fact that they may or may not approve of the policies of the MEK. That is not the issue here. The issue is truth. The issue is truth versus lie. The issue is whether or not, in the end, the United States government is going to fulfill its pledges. It's important for all of us, not because you are here merely to hear someone like myself. It's important for you to understand the crisis of confidence that affects U.S. government policy to fulfilling its obligations to these poor people who only want safety and freedom and security, not just in another country, but also here in the United States. I want to summarize by at least leaving you with a several calls to action. The fate of our relationship with Iraq and the fate of the hostages and the fate of the people of Camp Liberty and those who remain as the victims in Camp Ashraf and the bodies that are still not buried properly because Maliki refuses to let those bodies be given a proper Shiite burial. Remember that Camp Liberty is not a summer camp in the Anironics or the Catskills. It is the equivalent of virtually a concentration camp without security, without sewage, and when you see the photos that I see that the Iraqi government won't even let the rains drain from that camp in order to make the lives of those people as miserable as possible, you would say to yourselves, if it were me, but for the grace of God, go I. I think it's important for you to send a message not to a lowly Deputy Assistant Secretary of State who is a mere sacrificial lamb in the defense of a country 
and a government that doesn't represent the best interests of the United States? Who said that Mr. Maliki is a friend of this country? That's inexcusable, and he doesn't deserve to have one nickel of assistance from us while he does what everything he can against us. Just as Governor Rich said, he would never stand here and represent an organization or a people who did not warrant to have the safety and security of the government that he so proudly represented. And as a former U.S. diplomat, I would never be willing to put my reputation at risk if I did not believe there's a matter of important principle and important matter of interest and a critical obligation for us to do what is necessary. So, so please, please, you have better things to do. But you can't leave without calling on the president and the secretary to do what is right. Not to do what is wrong and continue to do what is wrong. The buck doesn't stop with Mr. McGurk. The buck stops with the president of the United States and the secretary of state. Happy Thanksgiving.